So today I wanted to talk about the rise of fascism and more specifically what we know from a scientific perspective about how such a rise in fascism occurs. It was a oddity and, and, a, and, and a question that lingered after World War II for many, many years um, and led to lots of studies. And that is, how does an ordinary person, uh, a neighbour, someone who was civil and decent, how do they turn to a point of supporting fascism? The willful uh, attack of their fellow citizens and the support of an authoritarian regime. And this is a question that's been asked a lot and we've got lots of studies on it. And even a bit more recently, we've got functional MRI studies. We've got imaging of the brain that tells us what's happening inside the brain during things such as political speeches or uh, reviewing policies and such like. The finding that comes out very clearly is that those that are vulnerable to adopting a fascistic ide ideology of the world um, are those who tend not to engage the more frontal parts of the brain. That is parts of the prefrontal cortex that are involved in values and goal setting and, and, and morals and things. And what is clear, when those that are vulnerable to fascism hear uh, a political speaker, they're not working out what they're saying, they're not trying to assimilate those things into their own worldview. What they're doing is simply responding to how that politician makes them feel. And it's that essential difference where it's the feeling that the speaker gives them that generates the support versus what happens more, it certainly happens more on the left, is that you engage these higher reasoning centres um, prior to uh, fully engaging with the speaker. Fascism also needs the right social conditions. There must be some form of unrest and you know, deep sense of unhappiness and distrust in the people. And that's what we have just now, of course. We have a, a, a very openly broken political system. Um, there is no question that it is corrupt um, and that you can buy access to politicians at all levels. Um, there is a deep sense within the public that the system does not work for ordinary people. What fascists do is they talk straight, they talk blunt, knowing that it's not actually the content of what they're saying that matters that much. It's actually just how they deliver it. The way that the 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 uh, left, the centre, even the centre-right, need to approach this and to tackle this and to stop the spread of fascism is also to be honest. And of course, if they're being honest, uh, unless they are also got some world-class sociopaths, if they're being honest, the problem we have is greed. The problem we have is that there are a greedy minority in the society who are taking advantage of workers, who are exploiting consumers, who are pillaging the world of, it, of its natural resources, all for self-profit and self-gain. That's the issue. That's the issue that's behind most of the issues we're facing just now. And that's the thing where people are feeling. People are feeling that the system's not working for me as an ordinary person. You have to acknowledge it. And of course, the issue with that is, as soon as you acknowledge it, you're going to lose your sponsorship. The primary issue is, if a politician comes out and isn't speaking directly, then they appear to be part of the corrupt system. There is no way of getting around that. And every time a politician, a non-fascist politician, comes out and talks in double talk, 
trying to protect both what their policy is and what their beliefs are and also with who their sponsorship is, who's backing them financially. When they start to muddle those things together, then it does not appear to be genuine and straight. And as soon as they do that, they pour fuel on the fascism fire. It is actually as simple as that, and we know that. Instead, they need to be honest. Well, yes, the reason that you're struggling is because greedy, a few greedy individuals, corporations, oligarchs, etc., are trying to pillage the planet. They are trying to exploit their workers and they're taking as much resource as they can for themselves. And we're going to stop them. And we're going to stop them with a wealth tax. We're going to stop them with the regulations that they need. Um, and we're going to call them out about it. And yeah, that means that those politicians are almost certainly not going to get sponsored and, and get financial support from those individuals and those companies. And equally, they're probably not going to get a lot of media support. And that's why you've seen that these ground, grassroots campaigns uh, are so vital. That if you can bypass that part of the system, tell it honestly, tell it clearly, then you can deliver massive swings in the votes. And you can bring in those voters who we would say are partially engaged who don't use that frontal part of the brain when they're listening to political speeches, you can actually pull them in simply by being straight and telling them what's going on.